and welcome to round eight of the West Bank Super Series here at Swakorps. In today's episode, we're featuring the Bridgestone production cars as well as the coverage of the two-hour endurance race. So buckle up and hold on tight. On this show, the penultimate round of Bridgestone Production Car Championship Racing. It's round eight, and after three consecutive coastal rounds, we're back in the high flood at Swat Cops. This time, the headline sponsor was Sassol, and even the NSF kids had a place to shine. Tension was mounting, and all the big players were here. Championship leader Free knew this was going to be a tough day. And as always, the public got a chance to mingle to witness heroes in the making. It was hot, even the weather. BMW would feature, but to what extent? Could Subaru snatch another race win? Nathan listening to Eye of the Tiger, and was Bose really here? For Marto and Ford, Van Royen and Opel, Taylor not penalized with extra weight yet. The scene was set. So let's go qualify. In qualifying, the Subaru looked like it had the pace early on, and it always goes well here, but Marcus Steven had other ideas. He was starting to fly high and trying to get away from Fareed. Reese put in a great lap time and made it. BMW's one and two, because Taylor was not holding anything back. So let's have a look at the front row as it was BMW, Taylor and Priest. It's an all-wheel drive and Quattro second row with Steven and Grunewald. In fifth, the other Audi Extreme was Chop Sabuka, and leading the championship standings, Johan Ferry. Down in sixth place. And behind him, Richard Pinard in the second of the Subarus. A 106.2, considering no weight, but still that bodes well. Yeah, no, it does. Um, you know, coming up to the reef, we knew that we were going to have a slight advantage over the Audis. Um, but. You know, it's going to be a long race. We get 70 kilos now for the two short races, which is definitely going to make a difference. Um, I just hope that, uh, well, I know we've got a car that's going to, that's going to last well, and um, we just have to pull off a win. You know, especially being up here at, at Swatkops, it's pretty much our home track. And uh, for all the people, you know, we've got quite a, quite a big crowd here from Afrox and BMW, so, uh, yeah, we really do need to to show what the car is made of. There's a 16-point gap between Michael Steven and Johan Fury. How significant is uh, getting third and three positions over Johan Fury in qualifying? Yeah, it, it's really critical. Um, you know, with third position on the grid, we get an extra point. We narrow that gap down to 15. You know, at the end of the championship, every point counts. Uh, you'll obviously you know, start further back. This track's uh, you know, heavy on the brakes. It's heavy on the engine temperature. So the more cars you're behind in a tow, you know, the hotter your car's going to run. So we are front, and hopefully we'll be able to, to, to stay out there and uh, collect some more points in the race. That's exactly what you need to do, Michael Stephen. Race one about to get going. It is the sprint lap race. And here we go, two BMWs. Right behind them, the two engine extreme Audis, the Subaru's in there, two of Henny Krunewald, but more importantly, down in sixth place with a lot of work to do, Johan Fury. He didn't get a good drop off the line there, unfortunately, Steve. And it looks like he's going to have even more work to do now. Well, he'll be comforted by the fact that he has a 16-point lead over Michael Stewart at the moment, and that can evaporate in a heartbeat, that's for sure. So, as we get into this, it's a tight, windy, and very demanding racetrack. Very hard on the brakes, as you said earlier on. Extremely hard on the brakes. These guys are going to have to take it real easy. The sprint race, not too bad, but remember, we do have a two-hour endurance coming up a little bit later on in the show. So that's what they're all going to be worried about. They're going to go at it, hammer and tongs, no doubt, here in the sprint races. But they do need to take into account they cannot break the cars. It's very vital to stay around for that endurance race. There are some big points up for grabs there. <laughs> You're talking about racing drivers. They drive these things flat out. They're not really worried. They leave that sort of stuff to the mechanics. Hey, it's broken, fix it. Exactly. Hopefully they can fix it. But that's why they're going to maybe just hang back a little bit. Fareed, though, is not doing anything of that. He is all over the back, and we go on board with him now, coming out of turn six, flicking left into Ezekieline corner, down the little straightaway towards Goldwagen. This is where these guys really get hard on the anchors to go down the gearbox, one gear, and then turn into Goldwagen corner. 
Very much line of stern stuff right now. And it doesn't look like the four-wheel drives. Any of them have got the match of the rear-wheel drives at the front. Yeah, it's got to be concerning for you for Hanfari as well, particularly in qualifying. Uh, it's not where he wants to be, and he'll know that Michael Steven is performing or oh, getting a little bit off the dirt at the moment. That was Melville Priest. Of course, speaking to Donovan van Heerden, they've got brought a big, big and strong package to this race day. Now, they're trying something different in those cars. Uh, one of them running the standard injector, and, of course, a brand-new one being brought on there. Seems to be working well, because Taylor's running it, and he's getting away at the front end of the field. Three all over the back of Krunewald. Krunewald is not going to let him through. Remember, today is a Sassel race. Day. So these Sasa Subarus maybe got a little bit more pressure on them than uh, anywhere else around the country. Well, sure, when you get a naming right for your day, you really want to perform and guarantee they brought all their sponsors down to witness this as well. Heading up towards Sassel Corner now. This is where late breaking might just come into effect, and it does. Look at Alfa closes up on Krunovalt, but Krunovalt just keeping that Subaru STI absolutely as wide as possible. Trying to close down on Michael Steven. Now they've done that slightly as Michael Steven is losing a bit of ground to the two BMs at the front end, heading down to Goldwagen to complete another lap. Yeah, they're very strong at the moment, and this is a very, very difficult racetrack to pass on. you really got to barge your way through there, so it'll go back to that point of rubbing his racing. Strong package right now, Taylor, Priest, then Steven. Here comes Grunewald at the moment, and Johan Fri is not making any ground, and that's worrying. It's very worrying. It's great for Michael Steven as we go on board with Melville Priest. Now, check this out. Got a bit of an onboard carry. You can see the rear view there on the left-hand side of your screen. That is Michael Steven. He's got Taylor in front of him. But check it how well this BMW accelerates. Up to 160 k's an hour as they come out of turn three. 180 as they get onto that back straight away. And it's probably going to go just over the 200 k an hour mark before he climbs on the brakes. And it's literally just rolling off and straight back onto it again. Brilliant stuff here. And that's the kind of racing we like to see. These guys are not holding anything back. I thought they would be. Yeah, I'm looking at that uh, odometer right now. I'm actually quite impressed with the kind of quarter speed that they are carrying. It may not look like it's quick, but it is frighteningly quick over there. And, of course, you've had an opportunity to be in those deep BMWs as well. Yeah, we got a chance last time out here, last year in the BMWs, and actually I was in, in with uh, uh, Anthony Taylor, who leads the race. So uh, I kind of know how it feels to win that race up right now as a passenger. But the two stealth bombers with the Acrobobich pipes are getting away from the rest of the field. As they come in a gold bargain once again. Look at Faree. He's working hard in that cockpit but it's definitely not going his way here in race one. Final lap it is, and Taylor is large and in charge at the moment and uh, doing a great job in protecting uh, him at the moment over Stephen is Melville Priest. Now, Melville Priest is sitting comfortably in second place, but uh, Michael Stephen, he did bridge the gap, but he wasn't able to uh, get past Melville Priest. Unfortunately, I think it was a little bit too little too late there for Michael Stephen as Anthony Taylor comes into the final turn for the final time of race one, and he's going to take 13 points there. Great race, Afrox, BMWs one and two. Engine Extreme Audi of Michael Steven in third place. And as we said, it is going to be a tough day in the saddle for these guys. There's the confirmation. Taylor and Priest, BMWs 1 and 2. Michael Steven, the first of the Audis. Henny Krunewald hung on to fourth and Fury in fifth. Dominating, great package, good ride, and you must be stoked. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, to start off a day like this, brilliant. You know, with a pole position for race one win, um, you know, I think it all just pays dividends to the guys at ADF Motorsport that have been putting in extra time. Also, the guys from Motec with the new M1 direct injection system that we're running. It certainly has proven that it does work, and it, uh, I think it's the way to go for the future. This, of course, is the second uh, last round of the championship in New Song Production Cars. This year has had its fair share of ups and downs. We have had uh, great victory in Cape Town, and we've always been having a good run in Cape Town generally. But uh, nevertheless, we, we sixth in the championship. There's one race to go after this one, so we will just see how things unfold and carry on. But we've got to keep strong and you gotta keep pushing and making sure that we get the best out of the car and the best out of our performance in general. Main rivals generally would be the BMs. I think the BMs uh, are very strong and uh, Anthony Taylor with Melvin Priest, you just never know what will happen in the day. We couldn't make it, you know, if it went for the fact that we've got sponsors like Engine Extreme, Dixie Battery, Southern Sun, Audi and the works, you know, uh, a pillar of strength within the team. Uh, the team has moved from strength to strength from time to time. We've learned to take our most goals and put them to the highest positions we can. This is world-class racing, Bridgestone production cars in the West Bank Super Series. So 
superb Bridgestone Production Car Championship racing at Swatscott round eight, and we go to race two. And of course, once again, this is horrible for your Humphrey, who remains fifth and doesn't get involved in this inverted grid of four cards. But what it does do is put out the Sabara in front. And a big surprise, we went for a running start again. No one gonna give us a standing start yet. Eight on this season. Back on board with Priest. He's on the back end of, of Stephen. And look at how Michael Stephen, he he's really, really pushing hard. Remember, he's trying to get as many points away from Ferrari as possible. And now with the two BMWs as a buffer, he's done everything right. I said it was cruel on Ferrari. I mean, if we had a six car inverted grid, which we normally do, where's this four coming from? And a rolling start? What's the standing start? I've never seen one. No, not in production cars for a long, long time. But we might see one yet. There's still a race to go. We're coming back here on the 26th of November, and we've got four sprint races heading your way on that day. Up towards Sassel Corner once again, and it is a Sassel Subaru that leads out. Now, Henry Krinovald is at the front end of this field on the Sassel race day. Dude, no one's going to catch him. Yeah, you're, you're definitely right. My money is on this, and I know the race isn't even over yet, but I'll tell you what, when he gets his nose in front, he is strong. He is the king of reverse grids. Well, they come down now, and uh, Michael Steven is normally that man. But right now in Goldwagen, he's sitting in second place. He wasn't able to capitalize on that front row, and uh, the Subaru just got away. And I think, as you said, if Rina Grunewald stays there and starts to pull the kind of gap he's done on lap one, he's definitely going to be in contention for a win here at the end of the sprint race. Yeah, weather is absolutely brilliant, and what a super turnout here in the high fields, uh, getting down to the penultimate round. It's a 60k corner round there as well. They have to be really, really good, and then get on the power, because they've got a right-hander which just sweeps, and you can really get up to a good speed. And maybe just before you get into the braking marker, okay, around about 200, 210, 20, it really is quite quick. Yeah, just getting over the 200 kilometer an hour mark, and there you go, at the 50 meter mark, just down the gearbox, and back through turn four. Castle Edge corner now, heading up towards Sassel. Sassel Zabaru out front with Michael Steven on his tail. It's kind of a battle of the all-wheel versus Quattro, but also the battle of the lubricants because engine is being beaten at the moment by Sassel. As, uh, oh, that's a late breaking there from Priest. He definitely had a big look there, but unfortunately the door was shut and he couldn't get through. Yeah, he's allowed Taylor to actually creep a little closer on that as well. And we always know that there's no racing orders, team orders in this Team Aprox BMW team at all. So it's a free-for-all, a bun fight, and it's the better driver wins on the day. So Priest is leading out Taylor for free is desperately still charging. He's trying to find a way past, but the BMs have got such good pace here this weekend, it's not going to be easy. In the background, Sabuka and Pinard going at it too. So uh, at the front of this race, it's one Subaru and one Audi, and at the back, the same two, but the uh, opposite of the teams. So having a great battle at the back end there, no doubt about it. The one we've got to watch out for, though, is Johan Ferri. Remember, he came into this race leading the championship still, but it's going to be even less of a gap and less of a margin for Michael Steven to make up now if he can stay where he is and keep Ferri in that fifth spot. Well, let's remember and recap. He came in here, 16 points, leading this championship. The penultimate round, this is going to be a tight championship. I think it's going to go next round. I think it's going to go down to that next round, depending on what happens in the endurance race a little bit later on in the show. But we'll bring that to you very shortly. Right now, Fari, you can see, Porsche just doesn't have an answer. He's going to have to settle for fifth place, unless something goes wrong with the BMs. And listen, it's happened. We've seen lots of action in production cars this year, and lots of action still to come. Well, we've also seen the fact that if we think about midway through this season in our, our winter break, Kronewald was leading the championship by 13 points. Now he finds himself about 30 points behind in third. He hasn't got a prayer at this stage. Well, if he's in the front end of the field, he's still got an opportunity of closing down, maybe stealing second place away from one of the two Arnies that are in one and two at this stage. And Faree comes onto the brakes for our next con corner. This is turn two, a very difficult corner, as you can see on Priest uh, Telemetry. It's about 60 kilometers an hour, and then it's everything she's got down this back straightaway. Yeah, it takes them all the way up. I love that piece where we call it the Mercedes complex. It really is a demanding, tight, twisty turn. And there he is, race leader at the moment, Henny Krunewald, on the sponsored day. It's the Sassel race day. And the Sassel Sabora is about to take the victory away from Michael Steven. Now, Michael Steven tried hard. Second place will be good enough, considering the fact that Ferri is two positions back on him. The two BMWs have not been able to get past Steven. So coming across the line, Henny Krunewald will take race two's victory ahead of Michael Steven. All-wheel drive versus Quattro. Two rear-wheel drive cars, the Aprox BMWs behind him. And then, of course, it was Johan Ferri down in fifth place. So confirmation of those results at the front end on the Sassel race day, the Sassel Subaru. Michael Steven in second place, Priest in third, Taylor in fourth place, and Ferri down in fifth. On the Sassel sponsored race day, what a relief.
big relief, you know. Uh, I have to say such a huge big thank you to my guys. They haven't slept last night. We changed two engines in the, the course of the evening in the team and, uh, you know, really it's, a, it's a, a repayment for them for all their hard work. And at the same time, you know, it's uh, been a payment for Cecil uh, and Subaru on the Cecil race day to have a, at least a, a win before the endurance race. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a good start leading up to the endurance event. You're reeling in your home for real and the points is getting smaller and still smaller. It's a good start to the day for you. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, since we got here, we've showed good pace. Uh, the BMs are quite strong and, and so are the Subarus, but um, I think we're a good match for them. Uh, the first race, I've got a third and, and second in the second race. Pretty uneventful, but uh, the temperatures yeah, in the middle of the day is quite, quite extreme. So for the Enduro, it should be a bit better and hopefully we can all some more points back. Moving on to Class T and the Fords were looking pretty dominant as Fomata put in some really good lap times and he needed to. This championship is still up for grabs. His teammate was right there as was Nathan and he looked like he was on pole but Bose put a sneaky lap in but was penalised for a technical infringement. So let's have a look at that front row. Graham Nathan on pole, Shaw Dumity on the front row. This row is going to be made up of Gary Fomata and Gennaro Bonafini so it's Fords and Volkswagens at the front. Interesting battle that's going to be, and so is this one, Michael van Rooyen and Andrea Bate from Cape Town. And it's Jacques Joubert debuting his Golf GTI and Heinz Bizet back in the Master. The man who uh, technically is on pole uh, due to some specifications that were going on in qualifying is none other than Graham Nathan. Now, uh, I know it's only technically, but you know what it stands and that's good news for you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, great. it's great news for the whole team, not just for me. and. Especially for me, due to the fact that uh, in Cape Town we made an error in the last race, which gave uh, Gary a big jump in the, in the points in the championship. I've gone, gone at it as hard as I can for the championship here. Yeah, we needed the points. I went out, put it on pole, fortunately, and uh, it's added three to my tally. I'm not quite sure how many he's got, but uh, we're going the right way. All right, there's only a couple of points in terms of what he's taken off Gary Fomato in terms of qualifying at the moment. And you said you made a mistake earlier on, so at least you've got hope out there. Oh, look, I think we're looking great. I mean, the positive side of it is we take a little bit of weight out the car. So I think that's going to be key today is, is the fact that it's hot. Uh, these cars are heavy. The brakes are going to take a pounding. Um, really look after the car for the long race at the end of the day. So, you know, just keep your head uh, together um, and we'll try and stay out of trouble. But um, yeah, it is getting tense. You can feel it in the pit uh, area as well. You know, this uh, this uh, it's cuts come down to this point. Coming down to this point, Gary, there's only a couple of points between you and the man in front of you right now, Graham Nathan. And Nathan goes into an next one corner, possibly with the lead. He's going to keep that inside line. Germany's on his outside. He's going to try as hard as he can to allow Fomato to possibly sneak through, and that's exactly what he's done. There is team orders in the Ford team. It is. Make sure that Fomato wins out. Or make sure Nathan doesn't win. Exactly. And Bonafini, the stable mate and the only other Golf GTR 6 out there at the moment, also in a brand new car, he's only debuting it in the last two rounds. He's really still getting to grips with it, but right now it's in with a chance. And there we go, in at the Castle Edge. Oh, oh Nathan's run wide. Nathan has run wide, and that is huge for this championship. Oh. He needed victories. You cannot afford to run wide and finish up. Oh, he's going to finish up right behind Jacques Jabeur by the looks of things. Oh, this is just terrible for Graham Nathan. But anyway, the battle continues. Bonafini gets great drive. Where did that speed come from? He just blew past Van Royen, and we're on board with him at the moment. And all you can see is the rear of Gennaro Bonafini and the Verona GTI 6. And this is the Williams Hunt uh, Opel OPC. The Astra has been absolutely awesome this season. It has been up and down, but when it's up, let me tell you something. This car is on the pace, and on the pace of Bonafini. He looks on the inside, tries to go on the inside now. Will he be able to make it stick in the BMW corner? I don't think he's got what it takes. They go side by side. Oh, brilliant stuff. But Bonafini knows. Hold on to the outside line. You'll keep it inside for turn two. You know, I don't want to be nasty, and I'm not trying to be nasty, but I should be calling Michael Van Rooyen and his team Tinkerbell because all they do is they keep tinkering with the car. They get it set up, brilliant, qualify, and then they, they tinker around with it. And look what happens. Oh, and OPC's definitely got some pace. There's no doubt about it. And with Williams Hunt on the side of it, they definitely want to uh, shine here because, remember, it is the Randberg version of Williams Hunt that is on the side of that car. He goes side by side with Bonafini. Whoa, that was close. Two of them nearly came together in Castle Edge Corner. That is one of the fastest parts of the circuit. And we nearly had a GTR 6 and Opel Astra parked on the sideline. Up the hill we go, and of course still in front at the moment, of course that's not in picture, is Gary Fomato. But this is a midway battle at the moment, Bonafini and the OPC Opel Van Rooyen, as you'd call him, the Rustenburg Rocket. He is indeed, and look at his own behind him there. Berza has come to the party, he had a technical infringement on his lap, they've now sorted that out, and all of a sudden he's in with a chance and sneaky through on the Astra. Oh, that was tight, he nearly had a big look there, the Mazda MPS has got some pace as well, 
and unfortunately due to that little technical infringement was uh, dropped to the back of the field but now he's playing a little bit of a role here i think because he's uh, yeah, a he's banana the in the way there and looking for a oh as i said that look at that he gets sideways i was going to say nathan is really reeling him in slowly but surely and it's a bit of a target on the back of that uh, mazda yeah well i'll tell you what heinz Bose is a gentleman and uh, if there's a chance that he will let uh, graham nathan through he will give him that gap he does not want to get in the mix of this championship because he's been missing for quite a few rounds which, uh, due to a financial constraint it's not easy to be racing at this level let me tell you it's not easy to be right here where graham nathan is now and you can see he's making mistakes it's not like graham nathan he really has lost a little bit there and oh perfect the run for height too just have some of that, Mr. Nathan. Onto the brakes now for Sassel Corner. And this is where hard braking is going to pay off, and it does. He closes up on the MPS. He's going to try and find a way past Berza as uh, a good friend off the track. But remember, they are racing here for a championship. The man that is uh, losing out the most here is, of course, Graham Nathan. He goes side by side with Berza down the little straightaway, out of his Eculine Corner, and Heinz gives him more than enough space to play. That's good driving there and lets the man through. Good point. Well, let's actually talk about that technical infringement and why he didn't qualify because he was given the opportunity to run a 40 mil restrictor. I mean, a heck of an advantage on the rest of the field. And his technician made a mistake and installed a 43 mil in restrictor. And of course, that's the reason why he was disqualified off pole. And also think about this, he's carrying no weight. So no wonder he's gonna be quick. He is very quick, there's no doubt about it. But Nathan is probably the quickest at the moment. He's looking to uh, close onto the back end of Van Rooyen and Bonafidi and try and salvage as many points as possible. A big mistake from the big man heading into this corner on lap one might just be costing him a chance of this title. On board with Van Royen at the moment, the Opal is clamoring to get a hold on the Gennaro Bonafini Frodo GT Golf 6. More importantly, at the front of this field is Gary Fumato, and he's got a five-point lead over Graham Nathan. And more importantly than that, he's got Duroni as the buffer, as well as Bonafidi and Van Royen. There are three cars between himself and his closest championship rival, Graham Nathan. Now, will Nathan find a little bit of extra speed now? There's only a couple of laps to go. Now, I don't know if he's got enough to get past Van Royen and Bonafidi. He has had to come right from the back of the field. A golf six looks quick from Gennaro Bonafidi. Uh, he'll battle to get on top and uh, pass... Uh, uh, Sean Dumini at the moment because uh, he is known to have the widest Ford around. Right. On the final lap and unfortunately it is a too little too late there for Nathan. He comes out of Sassel Corner into turn six. He's going to try and sneak one more position away from Michael Van Rooyen. But Van Rooyen, the Rustenberg Rocket, is not going to let him do that. For Marta though, has done everything right. He got away from third place, got to the front end, the chequered flag comes out and he steals race one's victory from Sean Dumini, his teammate and Gennaro Bonafidi in third place. That is crucial for this championship. For Marto, taking first blood here on the Sassel race day, ahead of his teammate Germany. Then it was Bonafidi in the Ferrodo GTI 6, Michael van Rooyen in the OPC, and Nathan down in fifth place. Fantastic result for Ford, a 1 and 2. Gary Fumato, Sean Dumini must be stoked. Yeah, good, good, good start to the day. I mean, look, I'm pretty happy. Swart Corps is, uh, has not been our our best track so uh, a result like this to start it off is, is pretty good let's see what happens now in the reverse grid obviously i've got graham right up behind me i mean uh, he's looking good his car's quick and um, tough racer so um, let's see what we can do third position on the podium again is the golf the new six running okay for you at the moment no for sure i mean it's just a new car we you know we're getting to grips with everything we're learning with the new system vmp motorsport have done a brilliant job on the car Frodo golf's just we're getting there you know the handling is phenomenal so we're getting there. Straight line speed we'll, we'll work on. You know, we, we're a little bit down, I think, but it's manageable, you know? Coming into the second last round of the championship, we're doing really, really well. We're lying second, um, five points behind Gary Fumato, where We've had a fairly hard season and uh, we've just got to try and make it up right throughout uh, to, to the end of the year. Um, we've debuted a brand new motor car halfway through the season where uh, BW Motorsport uh, came to the party beautifully with uh, Golf 6 GTI. It's done extremely well, so much so that they've had to slow us down from the Cape Town result. We did so well that they've put a smaller restrictor back in our motor car. All credit to my team, they've done a superb job and the car's just done a great job. My rivals for this year are obviously Gary Fumato. He's out in front in the championship. He's doing a superb job in the Ford. Um, what can I say? He's always on it. He doesn't fall off the game ever. He's uh, forever on top of his game, on top of the ball. Michael van Rooyen, who's in the Opel, also an unknown for them this year. Also got the motor car to do a superb job between him and Peter and uh, Maas. 
they also done a great job. Uh, my my uh, stable mate, uh, Gennaro Bonapiti, he's always there, never to be discounted. He's now on board with uh, Vic Maharaj, and that car is going to do a superb job this year. The Indy Oil car, thank goodness for the Indy Oil sponsorship, uh, which is also backed by RGM Motorsport, as well as uh, ABC Auto Parts, KAD Estates, Perodo Brakes, Everybody that's helped me with regards to sponsorship this year, thank you very much to you guys. Without you guys, we just simply can't compete. This is world-class racing, Bridgestone production cars, West Bank Super Series. too nasty there were five points coming into the round there's now eight points so even the mistake from nathan only cost him three points because he put the fastest lap in in race one and of course he was on pole so he would have only lost a couple of points there and here we go once again traffic oh, oh and dude he's got a little tap from nathan that was more like a love kiss Mwah. into a next con corner three cars abreast around the outside is burza on the inside is germany trying to oh there's a little tap between burza and germany nathan's going to try and sneak through whoa what is dude doing he's forcing under the cross Dude, what are we up to here? This is Car Wars once again. Never ceases to amaze me how this always goes south. Anyway, Dumidi's in front, Nathan charging. I don't think we've seen the last of this one. No, no, that's not over yet. Bonafidi and Burza, that is three and four. Formata trying to get past Van Rooyen. Van Rooyen has got the whole shot and he needs out. Yeah, we're on board with Nathan. Dumidi goes left. So does Burza. Burza blocks both Dumidi and Nathan. Now Nathan's going to try to go around the outside of the top of the hill here. This is Sassel Corner. He's now going to try and sneak ahead. And Dumidi cuts him off again. Oh, this is going to be hard for Nate to find a way past. Yeah, I know, but at the moment we've got uh, Boza, uh, who's in the mix at the moment, and he just does not need... To... Oh, look at that. There's an angry Nathan. What is Dumini doing? I oh, came off the throttle there a little bit and uh, slowed them both up so the rest of the cars could get away. They come into Goldwagen Corner. Look at the frustration. Oh, there's going to be some words said. Look at him. You can see him gesticulating in the car again. He's not happy. Yeah, but at the, uh, at the front end of this as well, the yellow Ford is getting away. It's exactly why Nathan is so frustrated. He cannot get past Germany. And Germany's doing everything right. In terms of their team orders, he wants to keep Nathan behind him. And he's allowed to. He's blocking. That's what it's all about. But the blocking, you can only do it certain times. You're only allowed one move across the track. You can't do it four or five times. Yeah, but you don't tap off in a corner. I, I don't mind his driving style. I think it's great, and he's doing a team, uh, a team thing. But you know what? Tapping off in a corner, that could be a bit dodgy. We spoke about the pace of the OPC. All of a sudden, the Astros at the front, and the Williams Hunt man is getting away. The Rustenberg rocket on his tail is Formato, and he's trying to get some more points away. Remember, there's only eight points between Formato and Nathan, and he's got to get ahead, yeah, and possibly still... Oh, he's going wide. Oh, no, Michael Van Rooyen makes a mistake up at Sassel Corner, runs onto the dirt, onto the grass, and will he get back ahead of Bonafini? Just... Michael, that was a wrong time to look in your rearview mirror. You know what? And, and congratulations to Gary Vermona because he brought pressure to bear. He did. Did everything right. Got to the front again. Now, if Vermona's at the front, he's got four cars between himself and Nathan again. Oh, this is just perfect. Here comes John Bonafini. Brilliant. Goes wide again. Ah, there's a problem on that opal. Breaks. It looks like he's battling with braking and unfortunately running wide out of Goldwagen now as well. So two corners, the two heaviest braking corners. We're coming down to the third of those braking corners now. Let's see if it is actually brakes. Can he close down on that uh, GTR 6 in front of him? Uh -huh. I heard that they changed them this morning, again those brakes, and he's not happy. And this is why I call it tinkering, because I had it all set up perfectly, and now it's gone all wrong again. Well, Nathan still hasn't found a way past Germany, but Berza is in the way there as well. The Mazda MPS man flying high and uh, sitting comfortably in what is uh, fourth place on the road. And now come flying and... Oh, bonafini has got it sideways here! Save it! Well held! Oh man, that was close, oh. but watch out for the inside! There goes Michael Van Rooyen, comes straight back at him. Looks like he's lost drive here, he's lost the gears. He's got no gears. Oh, what a pity there oh. for Bonafini. Yeah, they were saying that they were really, really happy with the car. Oh, look at this, too many up on the inside of Bosa. That was a nice, clean move. Right now, though, Nathan, the frustration continues. He's got to get... Oh, look at it, around the outside, Nathan tries to go. Then he'll cut back in. He's got it, he needs to get out of the way. And I bet you, Nathan's going, please. Oh, look at that, what a gentleman. He's saying, go on the left-hand side, down the inside. Gives him a gap. Trying to get on the back end of Dumini as well. So he's not letting that gap go too much. Dumini is going to come under pressure. Nathan says thank you, and the race continues. Yeah, the race continues. This is the one we want to be watching out for. Nathan and Dumini. Bursa, fantastic stuff, buddy. Getting out of the way there, letting him through your good mate, Graham Nathan, and not getting involved in the championship. I don't want to be involved in this uh -huh. either, dude. No chance at all. In fact, I don't want to even interview them. 
Yeah. <laughs> Good luck for after the race. Here we go. Through turn two, next con corner, onto the back straight. Now Nathan has got Germany in his sights. Germany is doing the same thing. And look at how close he is on the back end of Michael van Rooyen. Michael van Rooyen must be thinking himself, oh no, not another Ford. Here we go again. Into Castle Edge, and he's on the inside. The Castle BP for ST sneaks through and nearly gets past the Williams Hunt Opal. But have you noticed how Nathan, how quick he is? Because he's coming up to that back end. So clearly he is the fastest car. And he's pushing hard. He really is pushing hard to try and steal those uh, vital fastest lap points that he needs because oh, oh there. look at no, that. there's definitely a problem on the opal there unfortunately just not getting there but here comes nathan he tries to sneak through as well oh van Rooyen doesn't do him any favors there whatsoever and just forces him wide unfortunately no room there for nathan to play he had to back out of it otherwise those two cars might have ended up together yeah and why would michael i mean at the end of the day he's got a championship ahead of him as well so this battle is really really getting tense nathan has a look down on the inside but i'll tell you what sean doom has got the line now they're side by side Around the inside, he will leave a better line. Nathan will get through cleanly on this one. And then into a really tight right-hander. On the hard on the brakes, it is. Chasing down Dumini as well. Oh, where did he come from? From oh. Otto Hall. He came through there from Roy and just snuck ahead. But unfortunately, cutting that apex late has cost him the drive, and he loses the position to Berza as well. So Berza sneaking through there on Michael van Rooyen, the T29, Williams at OPC, falling back two places out of our next con corner. In the background, Jacques Joubert. I haven't mentioned him much, but he's out there for the first time. And remember, you've got Andrea Bate behind him in the third of the Fords. And he must be shaking his head going, I didn't sign up for this. I think Jacques Joubert might have had a little bit of baptism of fire here. I think he realized he's come to play where the real men are playing right now. And Michael van Rooyen looking to get back at this Mazda. Look how close it is. No rubbing there whatsoever. They were basically probably just a millimeter away from each other. And van Rooyen looks dangerous. He looks angry. He wants to get past the Mazda. Berza gets a very good drive through Execuline corner now. Down to Goldfagen. Hard braking required here. Down the gearbox. Van Rooyen turns in. He's trying. Oh, you can see it's just not handling exactly. as well. And the Mazda runs wide a little bit. This might be an opportunity. He gets side by side and he's gone past. Brilliant stuff there from Michael Van Rooyen. Yeah, but you can only take so much of a car, you know, sort of nudging you gently. You want to let him through after all. And Bosa's playing the right game here. He's not getting involved in the championship and he's not going to try and ruin it for anybody either. Chops a puka in the way here. One of the Class A guys, but that's exactly what Gary Formato needs. Here comes Germany. Will Nathan have a final ditch effort here. Unfortunately, Chops is on that inside line, so he won't be able to take Dumini across the line. Formato's going to make it two out of two. Dumini makes it two second places out of two second places, and Graham Nathan eventually gets up onto the third place on the podium. He'll be happy with that, but man, there's going to be some words said between these boys. All right, so con confirmation. Gary Formato, Sean Dumini, a one and two before. Graham Nathan in third. Michael Van Rooyen and Jacques Joubert. You came in leading the championship. You're putting points on the board, and this really bodes well for a championship, Gary. Yeah, it's good, of course. I mean, we're to win races, and... Uh... Uh, by the same token, Sean races his race and uh, defends his position. So, uh, because both cars have the same stickers on, um, I don't really think that um, the second car, the second Ford running in the road, should let anybody else through. So, I think that anybody who's complaining and this crap that uh, we hear about uh, Sean defending and holding everybody up for me is um, absolute bullshit and it actually needs to stop. Not exactly the result you're looking for. A bit of a problem out there. What happened? I made a mistake in the first race, which put me on the back foot for the rest of the day. But, uh, I simply don't enjoy racing with Sean Dumining. He drives like a pig. He just blocks everybody. You go into a corner behind him, he'll stay off the throttle to let Gary go. Whether or not uh, uh, they feel they are or aren't doing it for team orders, it's up to, you know, the spectator knows better. He can sit and watch. It would be nice to race against Gary and not have to contend with Sean just blocking the way all the time. But we'll see. Maybe the next race is Enduro. Who knows? Maybe the wheel will turn. It can't be easy for you out there with all the, you know, the things being said. Definitely not, Steve, but this is racing. And to win the race, you've got to pass somebody. You can't drive through them. I'm sorry, you know, that's, that's just the way it is. We're a team. I race flat out. Uh, Gary's leading the championship. I'm not going to get in his way, but I'm going to race and I'm going to make sure that I race and keep the guys behind me. That's what I do. Right now, the Fords are having a good run. And that's, that's the way it is. There's no hard feelings. I don't drive purposely to block and to, to, uh, to, to spoil Nathan's race, but I've, I've got a championship as well. I've also got to win. I also want to get points. So at the end of the day, we're all racing. Right? driving the brand new Volkswagen Golf 6 GTI from Baroda. Catch us at the next event on the 26th of November for the final round of the West Bank Super Series here at Swanwick. Hope to see you there. And join us after the break for some more Enduro race action from the Bridgestone Production Cars penultimate round.
fighting sprint races, we now go to a two-hour endurance race with 13 points splitting the two Class T contenders. There they are. And 12 points splitting the two Class A contenders. They look a little happier now, don't they? They certainly do. I think it was just the heat of the moment there. Henry Krimald would like to take a victory, of course, with the Sassel race day and his Sassel Subaru. Gary Fumato wants to extend his lead, but he's got that man to watch out for. Talking about race strategies, what will be the right one? A big crowd sticking around for all the action. We'll be running into the night. And when it gets dark, we're going to be in for some fantastic race action. On pole position will be the Afrox BMW of Taylor and Etienne van der Linde. Then Priest and Polter will team up. Behind them, Stephen and Sean Watson-Smith. The championship close, but not for Kronovold and the toy at the moment. There's the championship contender. Faree will have Swanepoel at his side. Then Sapuka and Moss. Richard Pennard will be running with John Williams in the second of the Sasa Subarus. Class D for Marta, Wilberski. Alongside them, Michael van Rooyen and Devin Robinson. There's one to look out for, Dumidi and Donka. Behind them, Rechard Ritz and Graham Nathan in the NUL GTI. Then Bonafidi and Thompson, good combination. Andrew Bate and Naomi Schiff making up the all-girl power Ford ST. So, Greg, this is it. It's for all the nuts and bolts, buddy. And double points, more importantly, as they go into the two-hour endurance race. It's just after the six o'clock mark, and we're going to be starting just after the eight o'clock. It's going to be dark when these guys finish racing. So, I don't know who your money's on, but I'll tell you what's going to be an absolutely awesome tussle out there. And they'll be okay right now while there's daylight, but I'll tell you what, a lot of these drivers do not like driving at night. Etienne van der Linde starting out in the Taylor van der Linde car. Priest alongside Sean Watson-Smith, who we're on board with now. He's in Michael Stevens' Engine Extreme Audi S4. As they go into the back straight now, we say this is an endurance race. They normally take it a lot easier. Hmm, I don't know about that, but these guys are flat. They're on the money here. I don't understand this. I mean, they're all lapping as if they were going around as in a sprint race. Except oh, Moss. Look at that. Except Moss. He's out there and uh, not used to Bridgestone tyres. Unfortunately, he's not used to any what warm tyres. What is he used to? He goes out on cold tyres every single time, and that's kind of what he does in Formula Volkswagen. But uh, unfortunately, it has dropped him right back through the field. So uh, he's got a bit of work to do there in uh, Sapuka's car. Look at the two BMs, though, side by side. Van der Linde and Priest. Now, Priest would like to take the victory and get ahead of Van der Linde and get ahead early so he can try and put some laps in between himself. And he does that. Oh, and a little tap there from Sean Watson-Smith on Van der Linde. Hi, welcome back to racing. Yeah, I'm enjoying it as well. <laughs> So the day continues right now. We've had just uh, an absolutely superlative day's racing with those two sprint races, but 20 points, as you said, double the money here. This could decide a championship. I still feel, though, irrespective, that it's going to go down to another round. It definitely is. Right now, you're looking at uh, Faree. Uh, he has the man who has to do all the work. You can see Sean Watson-Smith. That's the car he's targeting, and it's just ahead of the Subaru. Now, the Subaru is really having to work hard because Krunewald is at the wheel. He decided to get in the car first. He's going to hand to Jonathan de Toy a bit later on. But he thought, let me get out there and uh, see if I can get some hot laps in and maybe just be in contention here. As you can see, it's getting slightly darker. The uh, sun going down rather rapidly as it does do in the high felt. It stays longer down by the coastal regions as well. But this is going to be important. And a little later on, we're going to see some rather fantastic sights of really hot discs glowing in the dark, but not right now. Although, um, they really are getting on the brakes quite hard at the moment. Well, what you're going to see now is uh, the pace start to settle down a little bit. They'll all see that uh, two hours is a long way to go. In the background, picking up one of the Fords leading out right now. I think it was Germany that is in the front end of the field. We'll have to get confirmation on that as soon as we see the cars, but definitely a Ford at the front of Class T. Grunewald looking pretty dangerous, looking for a way around Sean Watson-Smith. Right now doing a great job for that uh, Watson-Smith Audi in keeping Faree behind him. A little too early right now for the uh, pit stops. And uh, by the way, Greg, as you know, we have three compulsory pit stops of six minutes each. So it's like a sort of a mini Lamar. We'll get to see some of the uh, pit mechanics come out. They'll be refueling, there'll be tire changes, and there might even be some replacements of brakes as well. I think there's going to be definitely replacement of brakes. The way that these brakes cook in uh, eight or ten laps, 
over two hours. They are definitely going to be heating up and possibly even breaking into flames like we saw at Pakisa. He has a little battle between Roots. He's out there in Nathan's car. Behind him is Lee Thompson in Bonafidi's GTI 6. So two GTI 6s. And uh, look at how Lee Thompson, look how smooth this driver is. He's had a busy day in the saddle himself. He's been involved in the engine Volkswagen Cup. And uh, he's in the Masters battle there, but now joining his good friend and uh, teammate in the Ferrodo team, Gennaro Bonafidi, to try and take on the likes of Roots in that Indy Oil GTI 6 ahead of him. Well, there's no doubt there's going to be some very different strategies out there, and they've all gone through these, and what's the best uh, the permutations in terms of drivers and the pit stop, and maybe some will do two stints and one do one. Uh, Knight's a different kettle of fish dri uh, driving here, but uh, it is a well-lit circuit, and there's no doubt about that. One of the very best circuits on, on our itinerary. But uh, it'll be very, very interesting, Greg, to, to, to note what sort of laps will they start to come in and who will try and go longer. Well, what I've got to say between these two drivers, Ritz and, Bo and Bonafidi's car with Thompson in it at the moment, they are not that far off the lap times that the original drivers would have done. Nathan and Bonafidi lapping within 1 point and uh, 1.2 seconds of each other. So uh, not much of a difference in terms of the driver's abilities. Right now it's a case of getting through the field. And uh, speaking of getting through the field, Ferri still hasn't found a way past Grunewald's Subaru. He's trying to calculate how many laps we've done at the moment. And that's uh, going to be mission impossible to start with because as the light starts to fade, it gets more and more difficult to see these cars. And then you just have these blazing lights and then the wheels start lighting up as well. But we will find throughout this field, as these uh, drivers come in and the teams prepare for new drivers, we'll see the, the leaderboard start to go full circle, as it were. And, uh, you know, there'll be many different drivers leading this race at many different times. That's exactly it. But that, uh, as you say, the, uh, the roles change and the leads will change right the way through, depending on how the cycle goes. As the guys come in and the, and the pit changes happen, that's where we're going to see things uh, changing up when the drivers are in pit lane. Right now, at the front end of the field, though, it is Marvel Priest who leads out. Second place is his teammate, and of course, uh, the teammate to his original teammate, Etienne van der Linde, in that car. Formato is our class T leader. Yeah, well, so speaking about those BMWs, I reckon they've really got a, not only a great package, but I think they've got a great team of drivers. I mean, if you think about it, Polta, Van der Linde, when was the last time we saw them drive? Okay, oh, we got Early pit stop here, Rekhard Ritz getting out of the Indy Oil car. Fans gone to try and cool the engine. Look at that, blowers even up the, the uh, front end of the car. They're trying to close it. Oh, Priest made a mistake. <laughs> Mal were pushing too hard. Oh, that could be costly. Look at the front brake disc there. Absolutely red hot. So Melville Priest pushing just that little bit too much. That could be costly because uh, look at all the debris coming out. It's, it's a works team here. Rekhard Ritz having to do the refueling himself. Well, that's clever as well because he's wearing a helmet and he's wearing fire gear as exactly well. Exactly that. Bonafidi's car comes in with Lee Thompson behind the wheel. They're not doing a driver change there. This is actually a little bit of a problem. There might have been a hassle on the car. So uh, that was not a scheduled stop. This should be a scheduled stop. And look at how the brakes are cooking on the Audi. Well, this is one of the reasons why these pit stops are six minutes, which is allows or gives it time for the brakes and their discs and their pads to at least have a chance to cool down. And if they didn't have six minutes, I think they'd be in trouble. Well, Melville explaining what went wrong over the top. He's going to hand over to Leroy Poulter, another very seasoned campaigner in a production car and a saloon car. Chop Sapuka makes his way out now, taking over from Simon Moss. 30 minutes down, and look how dark it is already. Here is a little on-track battle there, and uh, it's the lead of Class A. I think that was second place. That is now Nathan behind the wheel. Faria has got ahead of Michael Stephen, and that is crucial. Sean Watson-Smith was in that car. Michael Stephen's taken over now. He's going to be doing the night stint. Good luck to him as well. I'll tell you, I wouldn't want to be out there. I mean, it's really, really difficult driving in these circumstances. And the most important difficulty when driving at night is it's not so much getting into the corner, it's the exiting of the corner, that apex on the exit. That's very, very difficult for driving at night. It's spotting the apex as well, Steve. Really, really crucial to get that apex right, because if you don't, you lose drive, and there's a possibility that the car's behind you. Oh, and as I say that, Stephen has got back ahead, and unfortunately, Kirstie Swanepoel behind the wheel of that car now. Didn't have an answer to Michael Stephen. He's got past. We're on board with Swanepoel right now. Right, so they've got a long way to go, and it's very, very important for Faree and this team to garner as much points as they possibly can. What were we saying earlier on as they came into this? A 13 point spread and a 12 point spread in T, and 13 in Class A. So there's not much in it, and really it's crucial for Fareed to have a good, a, a good outing, particularly in this. And this, if you think back to Pekisa, where his whole championship came to the fore. Just have a look at this, Steve. The back of Bonafidi's car, we've got uh, Lee Thompson still in here. He's got lights on the front, but there are no lights at the back. That could be a crucial mistake here. He goes up the inside of Dermony, takes that position away, but the COC will be watching that. 
And unfortunately, I think he's going to have to come in for an unscheduled stop to get those lights sorted out. So the Ferrado team might be in a bit of problems there with an electrical fault. Well, you're well spotted there, Greg, because that is the case. Because you've got to have brake lights both working and you've got to have front and back headlights or rear lights, as, as in the case. And if one of those is not working, although we might see that at the moment, there it is, that's working, that's what we need. They need to, when they get on the brakes, you need those two lights to be working. And of course, you need two headlights in the front as well. Absolutely critical and well spotted there because I think if we have a problem here, uh, they're going to have to come in for an unscheduled stop. So this is Jonathan Detoy in Henny Krenobald's Sessel Subaru hitting into Sassel Corner on the back end of the Ford of Germany. Now, Sean Dermany is at the wheel of that car right now. You can see John Odetoy not quite a failure with the car just yet. He has had some seat time in it, but it's not going to help him out. Because remember, last night, during the qualifying and during the practice session for this, it poured with rain, so they had to cancel it. So he hasn't had a lot of seat time, and you can see just how hard it's being... Uh, uh, he's having to work to get past the Ford. Would this be a good time to say that I was absolutely petrified of the lightning and climbed under a car? It's not a bad option, because <laughs> it was definitely very, very dangerous lightning. But just showing how difficult it is to get in from a car. And this is a man who knows this track backwards. Jonathan Detoy has driven almost any kind of car around this track. He's now an Assassin Subaru, teammate to Henny Krenovalt, and it took him five corners to overtake a Class T Ford. Yeah. After one hour, continues. But I've got to tell you a funny story about that. And you were speaking about the lightning yesterday. And uh, it went off with such a loud bang. It hit the actual pits. And Gary van der Spey was working on one of the Fords with the uh, communications. And he thought that he'd blown the car up. <laughs> <laughs> right, so now we see changes happening thick and fast in pit lane. The Ford team working hard, but uh, working well here. They cannot afford to make any mistakes. And in fact, when these guys came in for the second pit stop, Sean Dumney's car was actually the leading car on the track. So very similar to what we saw at Pekisa, the Class T boys have got a chance of taking overall victories. That was the man that had a chance at Pekisa, Marco van Rijn. Yeah, you're quite right. That cycle of change, as it always is, free comes in. In fact, uh, who's Swanepoel. Trying? Swanepoel is coming in as well. Uh, that looks like an unscheduled stop, to be honest with you. Here comes Shopsapuka back into pit lane now. We just saw him go out, so there might be a problem there. They were battling with the brakes and trying to get them cooled down. Now we go with 15 minutes to go. And at the front end of the field, Michael van Rooyen had led for a while, as had Sean Dumini. And all of a sudden, things had changed. And of course, the cycle had redone itself. And it was the Afrox BMW of Taylor that was leading out. Now, he wasn't too far ahead of the first of the Engine Extreme Audis. And that, of course, was Michael Stevens. So there was going to be a good little dice here for the last part of the race. Well, it was only a lap. That's all it was. That was the difference. Now it's a big charge. The other bad news as well for the Fords, and you'll get into that. We're speaking about him at the moment. They brought three cars coming into this championship um, with an all-girl power team of uh, Andrea Bates and Naomi Skiff. Unfortunately, they had gearbox problem, so that entrance out. But we've still got the two running for Marto and Dumini, and for Marto's looking good. Unfortunately for uh, Graham Nathan, who's in second place, he's just been lapped there by the Ford. And looks like uh, the uh, Audi is starting to make a move too. He has got away from Henny Krenovald's car. He's got ahead and he's looking to close down and possibly even catch the BMW. That's how quick Michael Stephen was lapping with only about five minutes to go. Faree comes in. Problem so late in the race, this is not good. Now, with all this smoke that we're seeing at the bottom of the screen right now from the Ford, that's one of the Fords. Was that Dumini? I think it was Dumini was in. He has the change, this is for the lead. Wow. Can you believe it? He's caught up onto the back end of Anthony Taylor, and Taylor has having to go defensive. There's a problem on the BMW, and the Audi is going to drive around the outside. That's all you get to see, unfortunately, <laughs> as they come in. That is Gary Fumato. He leads out in Class T, and he's sitting in about fourth or fifth place overall on the road. But there's Michael Stephen, and has he got past the BMW? It looks like he has. Going into BMW Accessories Corner, it is the Engine Extreme Audi that takes the lead with only about three laps to go, Steve. Brilliant. And this will compound your heart. And Faree, who's leading the championship at the moment in a big way. Yeah, I think they're going to change up there drastically. There's Bonafidi and Thompson's car, the Ferrodo GTI 6, flying high and really a good effort there from that team. But a magnificent effort from the Engine Extreme team. They've got ahead of the BMW. They are now looking for a chance of taking a victory. Sean Watson Smith did all the driving during the day. Michael Stephen has done the majority of the driving. And look how hard he's still pushing. Those brake discs are lit up, all four of them now stuff out of the double right hander into Execuline corner heading down towards the flag the flag will probably be waiting for these guys now and this is going to be a victory and a very very crucial one for the championship Michael Steven and Sean Watson Smith have done it all right there's Henny the flag unfortunately just missed the Audi but it doesn't matter I don't blame him you're not going to see much with just headlights 
blasting into your eyes. Confirmation though, it is definitely a victory there for the Engine Extreme Audi of Michael Steven and Sean Watson-Smith. Brilliant driving from them. Unfortunately, Tayland van der Linde, the boost pipe came off the Aprox BMW. They were dumped down to second place. Ferri and Swanepoel in third. So in Class T, it was Vermato leading out in an overall great position. Nathan and Roots, Bonafidi, Thompson, Dumini and Donko, Van Royen and Robertson. What a phenomenal effort there from the Ford team. You've got to be very happy with the performance of the car. Yeah, no, look, I mean, fantastic stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, the trick in this race was getting the brakes all organised, getting the tyre temps organised. That's what it's about. I mean, you know, just looked after and the pace we had, uh, looking after tyres was good. So, um, it was great. Just thanks to Garth for just, you know, doing what he needed to do and doing some excellent lap times in. And, uh, yeah, the whole, thing, the whole thing came together. We, you know, we, we're doing well. We've done well in all the endurance events, and we've thrown them away for, for various reasons and so forth. And I'm just glad now that we've actually put one in the back. Garth out there must have been hair-raising at the night uh, stints, that's for sure, because it certainly looked like it from our point of view. Yeah, the night stint wasn't too bad. The biggest thing was uh, uh, having a race for Gary. I mean, this is his championship, and for him and the Ford team to invite him to help him out is... That, that was the biggest thing, because I know the championship is very important for the team. But the uh, night race itself, was, it wasn't too bad. The circuit's well lit, and the biggest thing was the exit of the corners, but it was a fantastic call. John, a phenomenal finish to this race, a victory for the Engine Extreme Audi team, and a welcome return to racing for you, buddy. What can I say? I mean, it couldn't be better, you know, to come back. Uh, not race for two years, get the opportunity to come back and, and help Mike uh, in the championship, uh, and then win the race. Uh, just fantastic, you know, I don't even know if Mark will remember this, but about 25 years ago, one of the first races I ever did was a karting endurance event with Michael, uh, which we won in PE, and uh, this is just an amazing uh, sense of deja vu I've got right now. Uh, <laughs> just an incredible day. It's a brilliant bit of driving from himself. He did a lot of the nighttime stuff because he was too chicken to, but it definitely paid off in the end. This championship goes down to the final round. That's what it's all about. Yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, great race. Uh, Sean coming back after two years, you know, was a driver. Um, he only had two sessions and straight away on the pace, uh, you know, great. Well done to him. And yeah, I've got chills. You know, I've got my <laughs> goosebumps, you know. And as you said, a couple of many years ago, it brings back good memories. Uh, I just have to say thank you to the entire team, the mechanics, the sponsors, Terry Moss Racing, Engine, Audi, everyone. We've really put everything in for this race. Um, Terry Moss has really, you know, given us the opportunity. And uh, yeah, the championship's coming down to the wire, and uh, we're going to give it everything. Certainly is. Six points in it between the two Audis going into the final round. Back at SWAT clips. Kenny Krunewald still in with a chance of getting up in a second. Well, it's just as close in Class T as well. But I'll tell you what, this championship will go down to the wire. Formato's leading it out over Nathan. 20 points in it. Bonafidi in third. Dumini, Van Royen and uh, Levy, Kwambi, Essa, Singh and Bates. Well, what a championship. Hi, I'm Michael Stephen from the Engine Extreme Racing Team. Join us for the final round on the 26th of November of the West Bank Super Series. Hope to see you there. For more information on the West Bank Super Series, all you have to do is log on to West Bank Super Series www.westbanksuperseries.co.za. for the Bridgestone production cars. Next up is the engine Volkswagen Cup as well as the West Bank V8 supercars. I'll see you then.